Hugh Jackman was the youngest of five children of Chris Jackman and Grace Watson, immigrants from the UK. They moved to Australia in the 1960s. When Hugh was eight years old, his mother unexpectedly left the family, leaving for England. His brother woke him up in the morning. There was no mom in the kitchen, no usual hot breakfast. His brother hastily fed him sandwiches and took him to school. In the evening of the same day, the suddenly aged and haggard father gathered all five children at the table. Dinner was prepared by a neighbor upset by the news, and showed a note hastily scribbled on a piece of paper from his mother. The children were so shocked that tears froze in their eyes. A year later, his older sisters Zoya and Sonia moved in with Grace. His mother found a job and rented an apartment in London, and the boys, Ian, Ralph, and Hugh, stayed with Chris. For the graceful, fragile, blonde Grace, this marriage proved to be a difficult ordeal. Five pregnancies in a row, unfulfilled promises of a happy life in Australia, where she felt like a complete stranger. Little Hugh was helped to raise by his godparents. When Hugh was 13 years old, Grace invited her youngest son to visit England. Hugh couldn't remember much from his excitement. No check-in at Sydney Airport, no 12-hour flight. It was grey and slushy in London. Grace, who had not changed at all, exactly the same as he remembered her, took her son to the theatre, but who could not even look at the stage. His mother was sitting next to him and holding his hand. He was over the moon with happiness. The grown-up sisters gave him a photo album, t-shirts, sneakers, and a whole bunch of some cute and completely useless things. But three days later, the euphoria was over. His mother sent him back to Sydney, as she was going to get married for the second time, and there was a lot of trouble with the older girls. In short, she did not have the opportunity to keep her youngest son. Since then, the rare meetings of mother and son can be counted on the fingers of one hand. Hugh Jackman was afraid to be alone, to cause discontent, to become unnecessary. His fears transformed into aggression, which he could not cope with for a long time. He was haunted by outbursts of anger. He fought fiercely with his peers and his own brothers. It was only during sports, which the boy became interested in, that he became more balanced and calmer. Lessons in the theater studio and participation in school plays had about the same effect on him. The boy studied well and after school he entered the University of Technology Sydney at the Faculty of Journalism. After graduating, he received a bachelor's degree in communications with a specialization in journalism. But who did not want to associate his future life with journalism? He was attracted to the stage. Tall, brutal, dark-haired, beautifully built, he attracted everyone's attention and effortlessly got the main role in the play based on Vaclav Havel's play Memorandum. In 1994, after studying at the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts, Jackman received an invitation to play the role of a prisoner in the TV series Corelli. The series was about the work of a female psychologist, Dr. Corelli, in a men's prison, who played the role of her most difficult patient, prisoner Kevin Jones. On the first day of filming of the series, Corelli, the studio, for some reason, was generous and sent a car for the young actor. Hugh, who had not slept well, crawled outside in the early morning and plopped into the back seat with the obvious intention of getting some more sleep. But that was not the case. The girl sitting in front, next to the driver, turned to him and, taking off her sunglasses, smiled and said loudly, Hello, I'm Deborah Lee Furness, but you can just call me Debbie. He woke up immediately, and I forgot that a minute ago I dreamed of sleeping. He had never met such a dazzling beauty as Deborah Lee. By the way, the script of the series, Corelli, was written specifically for Deborah Lee Furness, and Hugh Jackman was approved for the role of a prisoner after much thought. She graduated from the American Academy of Theatrical Arts, starred in the USA, and after returning home became a real celebrity, won the Australian Film Critics Award for her work in the series Shame. At the time of the couple's acquaintance, Furness had already reached some heights in cinematography in her homeland in Australia, but Jackman was only at the beginning of his creative career. This was his second role. Hugh took a week to summon up the courage just to tell her how the strict black suit of prison psychologist Louise Corelli suits her. There were always people hanging around Deborah Lee, men sending baskets of flowers and inviting them on dates. From the second day of filming, an executive class car came for her. The ice broke between them when, 
A couple of months after the start of filming, they arrived at Hugh's house in a large acting company to celebrate someone's birthday and ordered pizza. While they were waiting for the messenger, Debbie asked for permission to call. From her phone conversation with a friend, Hugh realized that he was waiting for the actress that evening, Mick Jagger. The Rolling Stones band toured Australia, and the day before Debbie somehow found herself backstage at the show, where she met the famous rocker and playboy. She didn't go anywhere that evening and stayed with Hugh. When Hugh decided to propose to Debbie, he introduced the bride to his father. At a restaurant viewing, the father criticized his son's new passion, who retired to the ladies' room to the nines. Too beautiful, too mocking, and too smart. He's going to make ropes out of the guy. And yet, it is immediately obvious that she is older, for at least seven years. Hugh corrected his father. Thirteen, but that doesn't change anything, father. We love each other. Chris said ruefully, I knew it would happen one day. Have you found yourself a new mom, son? Debbie, who returned from the ladies' room, understood everything from the expressions on their faces. They did not believe in her sincere love. However, Debbie did not expect this from herself. With Hugh, she broke two ironclad rules of her own. Firstly, not to date actors. Secondly, not to date men who are younger. However, she has been violating something all her life. A career that took all her strength, a series of idiotic affairs, men who see her as just a toy. Debbie is almost 40 now, and she has never had a reliable rear. Who loves her so sincerely and selflessly? He is gentle, caring, and infinitely devoted to her. Yes, she would be the last idiot if she missed such a man. During a romantic walk, Hugh presented her with a luxurious ring, the design of which he came up with himself. They got married in April 1996. The wedding was quiet and modest. The groom was 27 years old. The bride was 40. In four years, Debbie has suffered several miscarriages and IVF procedures. It was all useless. She couldn't become a mother. This conversation was hard for her, but 45-year-old Deborah, so strong-willed and strong, had to admit defeat. It's scary to say, but I'll say it anyway, I'm too old to give birth to your child. But I really want you to be a father. Let's adopt a baby. He loved Debbie and really wanted to make her happy and, of course, agreed to adopt a child. Hugh relied entirely on his wife in this matter. They went to the USA, where the adoption procedure was easier. The couple adopted a newborn Oscar and five years later, daughter Ava. The children only strengthened the relationship in the family. Hugh is a real family man who loves his wife and children very much. He was even against the nanny because he considered parenting to be important. Their children grew up and basked in love. Debbie wisely guided and always helped Hugh with advice. Debbie made her husband believe that he was an actor from God and the stage was just crying for him. Inspired, Hugh tried his luck, and, even if not at the first, but at the second attempt, he got the role of Gaston in the new musical Beauty and the Beast. Fans moaned with delight when Hu, aka Hunter Gaston, in tight red breeches started the area bell. No one believed in the strength of this strange marriage, which is already 25 years old. The famous actress, according to the public, could only have a non-binding affair with a young colleague. But Hugh Jackman himself, who would later play the superhero Wolverine in X-Men, turned out to be wiser, older, and more serious than all his peers and even older rivals. He managed to show Deborah Lee Furness, who had lost faith in men, not only the sincerity of his feelings, but also to become a real head of the family. One by one, his films were released worldwide. Darren Aronofsky, Woody Allen, Christopher Nolan, Baz Luhrmann, the most famous directors tore the actor apart, however, as well as the fans. Hugh Jackman was able to become a truly famous actor. He starred a lot with recognized beauties. He was called the most attractive man in Hollywood, and Deborah had to step into the shadow of a more successful spouse and take care of the house and raising children. The newspapermen are trying to find flaws in the couple's relationship. News was repeatedly published about the impending separation of Hugh and Deborah, about the actor's midlife crisis and his hobbies with younger women. Deborah was called only a screen for Hugh, allegedly hiding his true predilections. When all these inventions were not confirmed, Jackman began to sympathize. 
Allegedly deprived of maternal love and affection in early childhood, he found a caring mother in Deborah. 